guys, it's Kayla back again with more Red Knot. We're still in chapter two of this really crappy Fifty Shades of Story. Uh, Fifty Shades of Story, <laughs> but we have a new guest. Oh, hi. Um, yeah, I, I'm here, ready to uh, read uh, Fifty Stories of Grey, and <laughs> I think we're on the floor twenty. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems so. Floor 20 out of how many floors? If the, the thing will show... Whatever, I don't care. 356? This is more than 50 stories. Oh my god. This is a tall-ass building. Yeah. I think this one goes to the moon. <laughs> well, the, going to the moon might be cool, but I hate to use this shitty rocket we're on to get there. Yeah, it's... it's uh... <laughs> uh, yes, well, I, I, I'm I David Hopkins, since I, I, I failed to mention my own name. I'm pretty sure. Did I? Yes, you, you did. Did I, did I just now? Yes, you just now oh, said okay. your name. Okay, well, just in case. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's Dave's from the marathon. Hopefully not inside a wind tunnel this time. Oh, geez. If only we can bring back the wind tunnel. I don't know what caused that. I, I mean, maybe it was feedback or something since... But it was only when you were on, but whatever. Well, if it happens again, I have the classic Doctor Who theme ready, so. <laughs> Who's show decided he had enough of this shit today and decided he would not read anymore as of right now. Smart man. So, and Dave wants to read. Dumbass. <laughs> I just brought him in. <laughs> Hushto whipped out his cell bay card and cashed it in. Unfortunately, me and Dave have not yet, but we might. Right. But uh, I don't have a cell bay card, so don't let me whip out anything. All right? That's... Okay. Oh, uh, I was about to say, did I explain what the cell bay card was to you? I have no idea. I was playing Pokemon, and I just said this out of nowhere. Like, somebody whipped out their cell bay card and had no more fucks to give and left. Mm -hmm. And then that's pretty much what the cell bay is. It's everywhere is. you want to be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it's something that I wish was real, and when I got tired of somebody or a situation, I just be like, no, cell bay card, bye. <laughs> Fuck you, I'm leaving. <laughs> cell bay, when you have no more fucks to give. <laughs> yes. This is my field of folk. My field of folks, Mulder. <laughs> you will see that it is barren. <laughs> wow, I, I ruined that reference. But anyway. Friday night, Kate and I are debating what to do with our evening. I don't know. You've been fucking around all week. Might as well fuck some more. They haven't really been fucking. They've just been complaining about shit and doing dumb crap. You know, we got done with the interview in chapter one and spent... The majority of chapter two still talking about the fucking interview. <laughs> and I'm like, that was last chapter and we spent way too long even then talking about this shitty interview. And we're not even into the first se uh, sentence of this uh, session. We're already talking about it again. Uh, page 20. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So anyway, I, I just need to clarify what happened to Dave. Okay. Uh, we... We want some time out from our studies, from our work, and from student newspapers when the doorbell rings. So you want some time out, but you can't have a time out until the doorbell rings? Is that what you mean? No, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Standing on our doorstep is my good friend Jesse, because we have to have the ethnic third will, I guess. Is that, is that Jose or Jose? Uh, it's supposed to be Jose. I I don't know why I said Jose. I guess because I I've read so many bad fanfics. It could be Josie. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Whenever I spell Jose, it's with an H. <laughs> Clutching a bottle of champagne. Hushcho and I were just talking about that. Sadly, he's not here right now. Josie, it's great to see you. I gave him a quick hug. Come in. Jose is the first person I met when I arrived at WSU. Looking as lost and lonely as I did. Because you knew you looked lost and lonely and needed a friend to keep you warm at night. And that's when Jose came in and struck. We <laughs> recognized a kindred spirit in each of us that day. You're both ethnic somehow? I don't really know what you... Okay. So Somehow they made a connection, I guess. We both recognized that we were in a bad book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've been friends ever since. Not only do we share a sense of humor, 
that you're telling us instead of showing us, but okay. But we discovered that both Ray and Jose, uh, I did it again, Jose Sr. were in the same army unit together. I'm sure that this somehow relates to the story later. I guess maybe they become spies for the military? Dun, 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 dun. Would be a more interesting story than this. Probably, yes. <laughs> again, uh, the rule is tell, don't show. <laughs> <laughs> As a result, our fathers, even though that's your stepdad, not your dad, have become firm friends, too. Well, I mean, you think of them as your dad, so, you know, but, you know, whatever. Digging a hole for myself. Yeah, she she has dads, but that's okay. It's, she has it's... four of them, actually. She has four of them. Wow. Her mother apparently gets around. She gets around. Yeah. <laughs> I have four dads and 23 siblings. <laughs> <laughs> her her dad Ray is apparently husband number two. Oh, of her mother specifically, we don't know how many of her how many dads her biological father was married to. Mm -hmm. But uh, Jose Senior could it could be easily. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's that's really brilliant for for getting your characters confused. Are we talking about Jose? Or are we talking about Jose Senior? I mean. As a junior myself, uh, having my father also called David, it, it's very confusing, and I don't know why people would name their characters this. I tangent. I'm sorry. Flashbacks from childhood. It's it's okay. We we talked about this in MIL, so so we we understand. Okay. Joe is studying engineering and is the first in his family to make it to college. <laughs> Because that's the novelty, is, is seeing brown people in college. He's pretty damn right, but his pr his real passion is photography. Jose had a great eye for a good picture. You know what would have been a good thing to do? Mm -hmm. It's if he's, in, if he's a photography student, he could have actually helped you out on your assignment to interview this dude that you really had no business going to interview or conducting an interview. To take pictures of the dude, because apparently she was supposed to take pictures, <gasps> and she didn't. <gasps> and I'm like, why didn't they send a she photographer with up. a photographer with her? A photo is I photographer. Yes, thank um, you, photographer. I could not get the right word out, so I just went with it. I I've been complaining about this story for three hours. Oh, so. okay. So it's starting to wear you down. Yes. But but now I'm uh, picturing Jose in like a a. a uh, a, a duster jacket, and he's got the uh, the uh, fedora hat on with the uh, press pass sticking out of the the band. <laughs> <laughs> Camera around. See, si, senor, I'm here to take your picture. Yeah, I'm here to take the picture. I think, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just gonna get a beer later. <laughs> they got limes, right? <laughs> I'm so I don't mean to offend anybody who's <laughs> of actual Mexican descent or Latino. That's okay, I do. Um. <laughs> I have news, he grins, his dark eyes twinkling. Don't tell me you've managed not to get kicked out for another week of the country. Because it's a joke. Yes. I tease and he scowls playfully at me. Because he knows he's only that one inch from deportation. That's not funny. My green card is like three minutes from blowing up. Well, then get the hell out of my house, but leave the champagne. <laughs> The Portland Place Gallery is going to exhibit my photos next month. That's amazing! Congratulations! Delighted for him, I hug him again. Kate beams at him, too. Like a Care Bear stare. <laughs> Care Bear stare! No, oh, my weakness. And then they took a shit on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Jose! Jose! Whatever! Isn't that a... I hate you, author. I should put this in the paper. Okay, sure, I guess. Nothing like last-minute editorial changes on a Friday evening, she grins, because I would be so excited about that. Stop the presses! Why? My Nothing, Mexican I just wanted presses. to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to quote the great Muppet caper, and it didn't. <laughs> that's, that's where my mind went to. <laughs> they'll be spectacle they'll be <laughs> I should watch that movie I have it somewhere anyway off topic pay a movie let's celebrate 
I want you to come to the opening. Jose looks intently at me. I flush. <laughs> I plunged into the biggest turd in that toilet you've ever seen. I took a picture of it. She's also going to put it in the newspaper and they're going to display it in the art gallery. Shh, don't, don't talk about turds in the toilet. People will think you're talking about Jose. Both of you, of course. And he, he adds, glancing nervously at Kate. Because she's just said that out loud instead of thinking it to herself. <laughs> mm. I don't know what my brain is for. Jose and I are good friends. Didn't you just fucking say this? Mm -hmm. I I'm reiterating. I guess. I gotta pound it into you. Tell, don't I'll show. I'll smack it into you with Gandalf's hundred foot penis. Whack, 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 whack. <laughs> But I know, deep down inside, he'd like to, he'd like to be more. Shouldn't you have stated this earlier? Or, like, actually show him, like, maybe trying to ask you out on a date or something? Yeah, like, uh, that, I don't know. It's, instead of making fun of uh, his nationality, you could say, so guess who's not getting any tonight? <laughs> <laughs> he's cute and funny, but he's just not for me. Why? Do you, are you not into Mexicans? You not into cute and funny guys? Is he gay? Are you gay? Is somebody in the closet here taking a dump in toilets? I don't know. Why am I still talking about that? I had a, a friend who uh, had a, a dream about the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Uh, and uh, they, they were sitting in their living room. And uh, and uh, in comes uh, Frank Furter in full drag. And he, he, he comes in through the front door and walks into the closet. And he says, can I borrow your closet? I've stepped out of mine. <laughs> He's more like the brother I never had. Catherine often teases me about that. Teases me that I'm missing the need a boyfriend genre. Why are you obsessed about this? Either you want a boyfriend or you don't. Stop talking about it. I want a boyfriend, but I don't. You know, I'm complicated. <laughs> but the truth is, I just haven't met anyone who, well... Whom I'm attracted to, even though part of me longs for those trembling knees, heart in my mouth, butterflies in my belly, sleepless nights. I hope that heart in her mouth chokes her. Uh, well, her heart is probably <laughs> saying, you are a stupid retard. It's like, what are you eating heart in the first place, bitch? <laughs> Get in my bed and go to sleep. Yeah, just, just whack off like everybody does and go to sleep. I mean, sex is great, but it's nothing like the real thing. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I wonder if there's something wrong with me. Perhaps I've spent too long in the company of my literal. Perhaps I've spent too long in the company of my literary romance heroes, and consequently, my ideals and expectations are far too high. But in reality, why don't you just say that you've read too many books and maybe? Whatever. Too many books, too many books. <laughs> so, says somebody like myself who has bought $300 worth of books. Yes, this is a real thing that happened to me. Um, I, I Maybe up to like 450 or... <laughs> I mean, I, I love books apparently so much that I will spend over $300 for them. Yeah, that's not too bad. You're, you're fine. Okay. Uh, um... But in reality, nobody's ever made me feel like that. Oh, except for the fact that you were in a total klutz in front of what's-his-face. Mm -hmm. But I, gu I guess that doesn't count. I guess we've conveniently forgot about that. I have. Yeah, I have too. Sadly, <laughs> I've been reminded of it since I've been reading the story again. Oh no, are you okay? No, I think my, my eye's twitching. Oh, okay, well, well, we'll sit down and uh, take a deep breath. All right, three, two, one. <sighs> now, now do it creepily next to the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is wrong with this? Uh, I, if I if I find out, I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. Until very recently, the unwelcome, still small voice of my subconscious whispers. No! I banish the thought immediately. Are you- What the hell? You are not- Oh, I just- I hate this lady's writing. She, Gandalf in her brain is going, You shall not pass. 
Not with that kind of writing. I'm like, are you serious? Over dramatic much? Yeah, we figured this out in chapter one, though. I am not going there. Not not after that painful interview. Are you gay, Mr. Great? Why are you obsessing over this? Yes, it was a stupid question. That's a Dr. Seuss line. And I think I said that one. <laughs> are you gray, Mr. Gray? Are you gay, Mr. Gray? Said the popping J. <laughs> are, are you gray, Mr. Gay? Well, they, my, he might be if you can't find a boyfriend. If I'm gray, I'm gay. But if I'm gay, am I gray? I don't know. What's to say? <laughs> this thing should go away. We could probably make <laughs> millions of dollars over that. We copyright that. You can't steal it from us. Stamped. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> I knew somebody in high school who did that. I was talking to her about a drawing someone else did, and she just walked over there and like, that's my character now. I copyright it. <laughs> um, what? And she's like, and I'm like, I was telling her, I'm like, that's not how copyrights or anything works. She's like, yep, that girl didn't know it, and I didn't like her, so I took her character. And I'm like, um... <laughs> You're a bitch, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why am I friends with you again? But anyway, I know I've dreamt about him most nights since then. Very vaguely, mm -hmm. so you said. In your steel bed with white blankets and sheets. And I hate how everything has to be monochrome in this crap. <laughs> it's either all white or it's got to be pastiche. <laughs> yes. But that's just to purge the awful experience from my system, surely. Not really. You're obsessing over this guy. And everybody else is obsessing over you having a boyfriend. And don't call me Shirley. I watch Jose open the bottle of champagne. His ta he's tall. And in his eyes and t-shirt, he's all shoulders and muscles, tan skin, dark hair, and burning dark eyes. Yes, Jose is pretty hot. But I think he's finally getting the message, we're just friends. Um, as a, a professional just friend, no, you never get the message. <laughs> <laughs> the cork makes its loud pop, and Jose looks up and smiles. Frothing comes from his mouth. <laughs> and then he passes out on the floor, and I call the government hours later. To haul his ass back to Mexico. Hours later, the government arrived, and they took him back to Area 51, where they performed painful experiments on him. Because he was really from Jupiter. Before sending him back to his people. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, just to clarify, we're not actually racist or being assholes. We're just... You're not. <laughs> we're just making fun of dumb <laughs> shit in books like this. It, it is important to remember. Write that. If you really hate that, if you didn't need any more proof that I'm an idiot, there it is. <laughs> Saturday at the store is a nightmare. We are besieged by do-it-yourselfers wanting to spruce up their homes, because only people who want to spruce up their homes go to a hardware store. Mm -hmm. Whatever. They're, they're, they're the only ones who's dedicated to the uh, do-it-yourselfer. Yeah, not like crafters or anything else no. like that. Oh, fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Clayton, John and John and Patrick? Mm. Is that their names or your fellow co-workers? Uh, no, because uh, John Patrick Ryan is the main character in Tom Clancy's <laughs> Hunt for Red October. <laughs> oh, you're clever, ma'am. You are so clever. <laughs> That reminds me of a story I wrote once where I thought it was uh, the most awesome thing ever that I, as kind of a little nod to Kingdom Hearts, I made one of my characters' previous uh, set of boyfriends, Sora and Riku. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought that was just the greatest thing ever. I was so smart. I wasn't. <laughs> he was Sora Riku. Yeah. The two other part-timers uh, part and I are all rushed off our feet. What does that mean? Well, somebody picked them up and took off. I guess. Every time she says that, though, it sounds like they're being ran out of the store. Oh, is she, she using idioms uh, uh, more than once? Yes, this is the second time she's used this one. Mm. In the same chapter. Mm. 
But there's a wall around lunchtime, and Mrs. Clayton asks me to check on some orders while I'm sitting behind the counter at the till. Not the cash register, but the till. Where does this take place again? In England or something? It's It's got to be fancy. It's a till in Starbucks. It's not a... Okay. Uh, <laughs> at the till, discreetly eating my bagel. Oh, 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 you know what it is? You know what it is? Till is easier to spell than cash register. <laughs> I'm engrossed in the task, uh, eating your bagel? Uh, I would be if I'm starving, I guess. I'm totally eating this bagel. Oh. 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 <laughs> Don't look at me. Oh. Checking catalog numbers against the items we need and the items we've ordered. I s Wait, why would you be doing this at the cash register while you're eating? This is something you could be doing, but I don't know why you would be doing in the staff room where you would have your lunch, whatever. It makes it easier for me to ignore the customers. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I suppose. Okay. I've, got, I've got a problem. Eating. Eating. But, but I just need... Eating. Eat. Can't you see I'm eating? Okay. Well, well, yes, but, uh, but hey, aren't you... Hey, on... hey, 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 eating. I'm going to eat slower now. Oh, tiny bites. <laughs> You're a dick, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> and your dick can't fit through my bagel. <laughs> Well, it can now because you've ate through the center of it. <laughs> Eyes flicking, <laughs> flicking from the order book to the computer screen and back as I check the entries match. What? You well, mean the entries there's... on the screen? Not um, they're not matching yet. No, no, no. Uh, she she means like a, a uh, an entry match is a is a match that you get out of the box. It's the first one. That's why it's called the entry. And uh, I'm making this bullshit up. And <laughs> I see. I see. Go ahead. I I'm paying attention. Oh, okay. So the thing about the entry match is, mm -hmm. is that it's the first one in and it's the first one out. Oh. And that means it's the most bold of the matches. Okay. And it's uh, while, uh, you know, the matches are in that box and it's dark uh -huh. and everything, and they get scared and everything. Yeah, one of them yeah. thinks, I'm going to flick on the light. And the entry match is the one that tells them, don't do it. I see, I see. Because you'll kill us all. <laughs> I, I didn't realize matches were sent in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they can't communicate with people, so that's why mm. they, they look pretty dead. Then for some reason, I glance up and find myself locked in the bold ga gray gaze of Christian Gray, who's standing at the counter. Why? Why is he there in a department store of all places? I'm not a department store, a hardware store. Staring at me intently. Heart failure. Next. Miss Steele. Well, the pl <laughs> wait. Have she? Has she been? I want to say she's mis. She's misspelled her own name and and kept keeps spelling the main character's name different ways. But I could just be like blacking out from the stupidity of the story. I'm not sure. Devil's advocate. Uh, maybe he's pronouncing it differently just to to get at her. Could. Ms. Eel. But it would be nice if the author would, like, explain this. Like it, like it's a clever joke that only he finds funny. Yeah. Miss Steele. What a pleasant surprise. His gaze is unwavering and intense. <laughs> Holy crap, Shaggy! What the hell is he doing here looking all trust ha trussled hair and outdoorsy in his cream chunky knit sweater and walking in boots... Oh, Ching, yeah, uh, his cream chuck. Wait, it's summer. Why would he be wearing a knit sweater if it's summer? You said it was summer earlier in the chapter. Why is he wearing a sweater? Because he's a flaming douchebag. <laughs> Only flaming douchebags wear sweaters in the summertime. <laughs> Jeans and walking boots. I think my mouth has popped open. Pop. And I can't locate my brain or my voice because they've fallen out of my open mouth onto the counter. Along with my heart to choke me. Yes, Miss Steele, your your brain is on the the counter. Uh, Miss Steele, hello, hello, wake up. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> the brain. Let me try and push that back in there. It's okay, folks. I've done this before. Come on, get in. <laughs> Mister Gray, I whisper, because that's all I can manage. There's a ghost of a smile on his lips. And his eyes are alight with humor. 
because I look like a fucking idiot with my mouth half open filled with bagel. Mushed up bagel at that. As if he's enjoying some private joke, mm -hmm. as we've That's stated right. before. Yeah. I was in the area, he says by way of explanation. I need to stock up on a few things. It is my pleasure to see you again, Miss Dear. His voice is warm and husky, like dark melted chocolate fudge caramel or some something. Something. I don't I I ran out of cochlearisms, I'm sorry. sorry. I, I I guess because melted chocolate fudge caramel. You know, it couldn't just be like fudge caramel on a or or chocolate on a Sunday or anything like that. No, no. But that's not warm and husky, I guess. I, I suppose. You know, we could just say, like, warm and husky uh, or something because, yeah, that's not lame at all. Also, something if he's got to pick up some stuff, why would he do it? He's a, what, a millionaire, billionaire at this point? He's successful. He's got people he pays to do this shit for him. He's got gophers. That's true. Why didn't he do that? Get a gopher. Oh, he's stalking her. I shake my head to gather my wits. My heart is pounding in a fr pounding a frantic tattoo. Oh, hold on! It's it's like uh, your wits. They're, they're they're supposed to be on the on the inside of the uh of the, in the inside of your skull, but sometimes they droop down and into the the uh, center. So you have to shake your head so that they pop, they they fly back up against the skull again. <laughs> that's why that's why you shake your head to gather your wits. Yeah. Yes. Okay. My head is pounding a frantic <coughs> tattoo. <coughs> yes? Her head her head is pounding? That's what it says. My he Oh, heart, not my head. I don't know why <laughs> I read that as head. But I, it, well, my head is pounding. Oh, okay. That could be why. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my heart is pounding a frantic tattoo. Well, it's good enough to say my heart is pounding. Comma. And for some reason, I'm blushing furiously. Why is it for some reason? Just say, and you're blushing. Under his steady scrutiny. She already said she was blushing, right? I don't think so. No. Oh, okay. But whatever. It's not like it matters, because we'll probably be... I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay, bub. I don't know what that <laughs> was, but it wasn't good. I am utterly thrown by the sight of him. Yes, we realized this. Yes. You don't need to tell us. We we figure this out from, from you describing your reaction to him being there. Of him standing before me. My memories of him did not do him justice. He's not merely good looking. He's the epitome of male beauty. That's your opinion. Breathtaking. And he's here. I, I think so. He's And in brains, too. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Here in Clayton's hardware store. Go figure. Why is that there? You don't need that. Don't it, need it at all. I, I think the go figure is a stream of consciousness or something. Probably, <laughs> but it's not well done. Finally, my cognitive no. functions are restored and reconnected with the rest of my body. I mutter. What can I help you with this, <laughs> It just sounds like you're squeaking. <laughs> I'm here to take your order. It's just what you see. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? I don't know if you watched all that or not. Oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Good Burger. He smiles, and again, it's <laughs> and again, it's like he's privy to some big secret. It is so disconcerting. Taking a deep breath, I put on my professional, I've worked in this shop for years, facade. Uh, shouldn't it be your face or, like, dude, I, uh, whatever, I'm just gonna keep going. I can do this. Rock on, loser! There are a few items I need to start with, like some cable dials. He mutters, his gray eyes cool, but amused. You silly girl, squeaking like an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> you bray like a dog. <laughs> Cable ties? Oh my! We, we suck various lengths. Shall I show you? I mutter, my voice soft and wavery. Get a grip, Steel. A slight frown mares Gray's 
Blah, 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 blah. A slight frown mars Gray's rather lovely brow. Please, lead the way, Miss Steele. He says, I try for nonchalance as I come out from behind the counter, but really, I am concentrating hard on not falling, falling over my own feet. My legs are suddenly the consistency of jello. I'm so, I'm so glad, you know, you could also say jelly, but that works too, I guess. J-E-L-L-O. Are they sponsoring you? Is that why you put them in your story? Product placement. <laughs> I'm so glad I decided to wear my best jeans this morning because you knew somebody would come and check out your ass. Mm-hmm. So shake it. They're in with the electrical goods. I My voice is a little too bright. I glance up at him and regret it almost immediately. Damn, he's handsome. I blush. Again. <laughs> After you, he murmurs, gesturing with his long-fingered, beautifully manicured hand. With my heart almost strangling me, because it's in my throat, trying to escape from my mouth, I head down one of the aisles to the electrical section. 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 It's the word, David. It's going, it's, it's pronounced section. Stop saying it's section. Why is he in Portland? Why is he here at Clayton's? And from- Because he's fucking stalking you, dumbass! Why else would a fucking businessman be there? I mean, come on! Oh yeah, no shit. <laughs> like, even I could see this from miles away, but somehow the protagonist is so fucking stupid. Ugh. We, we, we've established that she, she's not got everything going on. I know, I know. There's like a, a little hamster going right now and it's doing its best it's like it's panting it's probably not even that it's taking a break eating like little flower yeah. seeds <laughs> it's suddenly it's gonna go oh shit i should be doing something <laughs> but i'm not then it's gonna be like yeah fuck it i'm just gonna shove more uh sunflower seeds in my mouth I'm not fat enough <laughs> yet no the, the, the hamster's like sitting on his easy chair eating sunflower seeds he's got the remote in one hand <laughs> and he looks up to the wheel and he goes eh, after after seinfeld <laughs> <laughs> and from a very tiny underused part of my brain well probably located at the base of my mandula oblongata where my subconscious dwells comes you the thought don't even fucking know this bullshit don't even pretend you're fucking I smart it doesn't make you look any I better. I looked it up on It just Wikipedia. makes you look like you're trying too hard. <laughs> Comes the thought, he's here to see you. No way! I dismiss it immediately. Why would this beautiful, powerful, urbanite man want to see me? The idea is preposterous, and I kick it out of my head. <clears throat> I hear the wind tunnel. Oh. <laughs> okay, we good? Seems like it. Are you in Portland on business? I ask. And my voice is too high. Oh, wait. <clears throat> Are you in Portland on business? I ask. And my voice is too high. Like I've got my finger trapped in a door or something. Damn, try to be cool, Aunt Anal. Anal's a good name. I had a dog named Daniel. He looked like a butt. <laughs> 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 we we are twelve years old. Yeah. I I I my name is Dave and I'm I'm waiting to see this uh, book. It's called The Fifty Shades of Grey by E. L. James and I am just gonna read the book and I'm just fast forwarding to the naughty parts. <laughs> I was visiting the Wazoo Farming Division. It's based in Vancouver. I'm currently funding some research there in crop rotation and soil science. He says matter-of-factly. See? Not here for, to find you at all. My subconscious sneers, subconscious sneers at me. Loud, proud, and pouty. I flush at my foolish wayward thoughts. Why would it be your subconscious? It would be your more rational side mm. that is suppressing your subconscious thoughts. Yeah, your subconscious is just sitting, is the hamster sitting next to the other hamster giving him the finger wearing a shirt that says, I'm most stupid. <laughs> All part of your feed the world plan, I tease? Something like that, 
he acknowledges, and his lips quirk in a half smile. He gazes at the selection of cable ties we stock at Clayton's. What on earth is he going to do with those? I cannot picture him as a as a do it yourself at all. That's because he's got gophers to do this shit for him. Right, this sex swing isn't going to build itself. <laughs> His fingers trail across the various packages displayed, and for some explic- inexplicable reason, I have to look away. He bends and selects a packet. How creepy. He's just walking down the aisle, he's got his fingers stretched out, and he's <laughs> Come he's to me. He's caressing all the packages. <laughs> like, this could be my finger on you. Wink, wink, nudge, Check nudge. Check it out. See how I take this corner? <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's got, maybe one of his fingers are like those, um, those type of lemurs that come out at night. Mm. And they get the really long finger and they, they tap t- uh, tree trunks like woodpeckers would with their beaks <laughs> to find grubs and things. Yep. <laughs> yeah, just like that. Okay. This little duel, he says in his oh-so-secret smile, and I blush again. <laughs> Tee-hee. Is there anything else? I'd like some duct uh, masking tape. Not not the right what? kind. No, just some masking tape. That's all. Masking tape? <laughs> Are you redecorating? The words are out before I can stop them. Surely he hires laborers or his staff to help him decorate, but then again, if they're not here getting the stuff themselves, why would he? No, not redecorating. He says quickly, then smirks, and I have the uneasy feeling that he's laughing at me, because he knows I'm that fucking stupid and can't figure this shit out. <laughs> stupid cunt. <laughs> Am I that funny? Wait, funny looking? This way... I murmur embarrassed. Masking tape is in the decorating aisle. I glance behind me as he follows. Have you worked here long? His voice is low, and he's gazing at me, gray eyes concentrating hard. I blush even more brightly. Why? You... (sighs) I'm randomly picking words out of the dictionary, hoping to make it go longer. I need to fill 20,000 words, or my editor won't (laughs) stop this as a book. I need to reach novel status and... I didn't have an editor, (laughs) actually. I self-published it, from what I recall. See? I'm just that fucking great. (laughs) With shit this golden, why would you give it to anybody else? Why the hell does he have this effect on me? I feel like I'm 14 years old. Gouache, as always, and out of place. Goish. Goish? Goish. I've never heard that expression. It's, It's more of a word than an expression. Well, I, yes, I, I'm sorry. I'm just failing. No, no, it's fine. It's, 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 it's like one of those words you, you, you look up in a thesaurus. Uh, I see. It, it actually means out of place. But it's, it, and she just says out of place. So it's out of place is always an out of place. And so she, she probably looked it up in a thesaurus. I, I see. So she's redundant. It's like, nobody else knows what the fuck this word means. I can get away with bloating my book up with words. This is going to make me look super smart. <laughs> Eyes front, Steel. For yes. I mutter as we reach our goal. To distract myself, I reach down and select with two widths of masking tape. That, huh? And select the two widths of masking tape that we stock. Take out an extra that. And I think that sentence might be okay. I'll take that one, Gray says softly, pointing at the wider tape, which I pass to him. Our fingers brush very briefly, and the current is there again. A pee, a poo, vomit, love? No, no, he's been, uh, on the way to the masking tape, he's been rubbing his feet on the carpet. Ah, okay, I see. (laughs) Zapping through me, okay, yeah, okay, that's exactly what he's been doing. Stepping through me like I've touched an exposed wire. Ow, is he, like, Electro-Man or something? (laughs) I gasp involuntarily as I feel it, all the way down to somewhere dark and unexplored, deep in my belly, because you've never masturbated before, or gotten horny or anything. Right. It's always come from her belly. No, that's when you're hungry, dear. We're talking about the other thing. Oh, that's not where babies come from? (sighs) 
desperately, I scrabble around for my equilibrium because you had lost it. And you could, can just say balance, you know. Anything else? My voice is husky and breathy. <laughs> His eyes widen slightly. Some rope. I think his voice mirrors mine. Hint, hint, wit, wink, hint, hint, wink, wink. This way. I duck, my <laughs> I duck my head down. I'm sorry, I'm laughing at my own stupid voice. It's I, okay. I duck my head down to hide my recurring blush and head for the aisle. You should go to a doctor about that. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Apparently, you she, constantly have hot flashes. She, yeah, she's going to be one of the. Uh, you you remember the the entry match that we discussed before? Yeah. Well, they're waiting. They're, their god is this uh, this woman whose head catches on fire, and I think this may be <laughs> <laughs> this may be her. She just needs to blush a little bit more, and that head is going up in flame. <laughs> What sort were you after? We have synthetic and natural filament rope, twine, cable cord. I halt at his expression, his eyes darkening. Holy cow. Moo. Holy cow, see? <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'll take five hours of the natural filament rope, please. Quickly, with trembling fingers, I measure out five yards against the flex ruler. Fixed ruler. You, you said flex. Oh, fixed, flexed. Yeah, okay. <laughs> fixed ruler. I don't know where I got flex from. I, I guess. You were, you were thinking about the, uh, you were thinking about Mr. Gray, weren't you? Thinking about him shirtless, yes, of flexing his arm. Because he is so fucking hot. I mean, have you seen the trailers on TV? Oh my God. Those abs and just abs and wine. Oh my God. Wait, I have not seen the trailers. Hold on. Oh, have you not? No. <laughs> That's pre I saw the trailer on TV once because I was watching um I think I was watching Stalker or maybe or maybe Elementary and that's all the trailer was was just showing his abs mm -hmm. and them drinking wine. Like that's all it was was wine and abs. I dare not look at him. Jeez, could I feel any more self-conscious? Mm. Uh, taking my Stanley knife from the back pocket oh, okay. because I really need to know the the brand name uh, of my jeans. Oh. I cut it. Yes. Uh, yeah, she was talking about how she was uh, happy. She was wearing her jeans that day, and that was uh, we 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 were to assume it so that it, it we get the shape of her ass, right? So, so that means yeah. uh, the the little bulge of her knife was also visible in her back pocket, sort of distracting the. I cut it, then coil it neatly before tying it in a slip knot. By some miracle, I managed not to remove. Oh, is this why she works in a hardware store? And and I'll... okay, I see now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's sorry. It it took me until I read about the slip knot, and then. And then it occurred to me why she would need to know the skill. Mm. Right. I love that band. I cut it, then coiled it in a slipknot. By some miracle, I managed not to remove a finger with my knife. I would hope you would know not to cut yourself. Yeah, because she's that dense. She's got scars all up and down her arms, and everybody feels sorry for her because she thinks it, it was like suicide attempts. But no, it's, it's just she keeps missing. And that's why, what he finds so attractive about her. They are a girl scout, he asked. Sculptured, sensual lips curled in amusement. Don't look at his mouth. Don't imagine a dick in his mouth. <laughs> I have trouble with that sometimes. I sometimes see people smiling and I think, I wonder what he looks like. With Speaking of the girl scouts, do they learn the same things the boy scouts do? Like how to tie knots and things? Because I thought they just learned to sell cookies. Um, yeah, they, they learn how to hoard cookies. <laughs> it's very useful in their later lives when they become prostitutes. <laughs> and, and drug sellers. And, and, yeah, and pushers when they, sore, they hoard different kinds of cookies. These are more sugary flavors. <laughs> It's got a special white cream sauce. Yeah. No, uh, no, the, the Girl Scout manual, the last time I saw it, did not have uh, uh, knots and things. It was, it was very okay. 1950s. Uh, that's what I was thinking, but I wasn't sure, because it's not like I've ever been in the Girl Scouts 
or know anything about the Girl Scouts. <laughs> so, but uh, no, I was in Boy Scouts, and uh, you know, since uh, we used the same uh, hut as the uh, the Girl Scouts did, uh, you know, being curious young men as we were, we we tried to sneak our way into the Girl Scout huts. <laughs> Mm-hmm. We we stole one of their manuals just to find out what the ancient arts of the female were all about, and apparently it's all <laughs> cooking and dresses and <laughs> and bullshit like that. I'm sorry for Girl Scouts that you get the shit end of the Scout deal because you would think that they would be more you know supportive of girls who might want to learn how to do all that. Crap. I, I'm pretty sure the the manual has updated by, by now, but. <laughs> Well, I would hope so, but again, I don't know. It's either the Girl Scouts or the Freemasons, so and neither quite great. But... Organized group activities aren't really my thing, Mister Gray. He arcs a brow. What is your thing, Anastasia? <laughs> He's not just going to call you Aunt Anal or anything like that. It's just going to be Anastasia. Anastasia. <laughs> He asks, his voice soft, and his secret smile is back. I gaze at him, unable to express myself. I'm on shifting tectonic plates. Try and be cool, Anna. My tortured subconscious begs on bended knees. Okay, stop it. We get it. (laughs) This book is about bondage, and crappy bondage at that. I whisper, but inside my subconscious is screaming, I'm not your subconscious! Go ask the other fucker! (laughs) You, you are my thing. I slap it down instantly, mortified that my spiky is having ideas above its station. Down! Down! Because you're just a servant girl, apparently, and he is your lord. Clever. I was in the Girl Scouts, and I learned how to tie my slip knots. (laughs) <laughs> and then that's how we killed animals with our bare hands just like Sarah Palin <laughs> <laughs> what kind of books he cocks his head to one side why is he so interested oh you know the usual the classics British literature <laughs> How is your throat not killing you? Um, it's it's a uh, parody of another character, but okay. <clears throat> British literature mainly. <clears throat> you ugly cock. <laughs> <laughs> he rubs his chin with his long index finger and thumb as he contemplates my answer, or perhaps he is just very bored and trying to hide it. I, every time she mentions his long index finger, I, I keep thinking his fingers got like five knuckles or something. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, like one of those lemurs that, you know, beats on the tree with his th- finger. <laughs> hey guys, it's Caleb. Sorry to show back up in the middle of the story, but thanks to interrupting Big Brother interrupting, it's a new day and we're not sure <laughs> where we where we stopped. But I have Hush show back. <laughs> Hi. So sorry, Dave fans. He only got like an hour, and that was about it. He got like three pages. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry about that. But we got Hush show back. And again, we don't really. I don't really remember where we stopped. So we're just gonna pick up with, or perhaps he's just very bored and trying to hide it, <laughs> which is pretty much us. <laughs> Anything else you need? I have to get off the subject. Those finger those fingers on that face are so begoing. What fingers? He put his hand on his cheek. I don't know what's going on. I I love I, I'm just I'm just imagining like this woman standing there watching this dude who's just like rubbing his hands all over his face for some reason. <laughs> I am so baby smooth after this morning shave still. <laughs> Man, I love this um, <laughs> shaving thing I put all over my face. Wait, wait, wait. I don't know. <laughs> oh, right, right. I don't know. 
I don't know. What else would you recommend? What would I recommend? I don't even know what you're doing. Weren't you talking about books? Oh, well. I thought. <laughs> Who's your show? Bro, do it yourself. I keep getting lost in this book. It's so <laughs> bad. It's so bad. <laughs> he nods. Gray, gray eyes alive with wicked humor. Because he's so... Yeah. Yeah, this is so funny. I flush and my eyes stray of their own accord to his snug jeans. Are you kidding me? Uh, coveralls, I reply. Oh my god, just what? <sighs> and I know I'm no longer screening what's coming out of my mouth. Well, why start now? I mean, you did ask him if he was gay and talked about his adoption. Why not just ask him about the state of his sphincter? <laughs> well, it's currently erect because I'm talking to somebody I'm going to have my way with later. His sphincter? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I, I'm not half here today. <laughs> so apparently Caleb can't keep up with the conversation. <laughs> maybe maybe you just meant that he had his uh, his finger clenched or something. Because, you know, sometimes people do that when they're in a tense or arousing situation. I can't believe we're talking about this. And I can't believe it. It's more amusing than what's on this page. <laughs> he raises an eyebrow amused yet again because I am so fucking funny. You wouldn't want to ruin your clothing. I gestured vaguely in the direction of his jeans. I could always take them off, he smirks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that that was uh, Hushcho's opinion on the matter. Um, I feel the color in my cheeks rising again, as well as the vomit in my throat. I must be the color of the Communist Manifesto. Okay, what? look, the color of the... <sighs> it's not clever. You're not clever. It's not clever. It was written on white paper. It was. It's not clever. It's not clever. Stop talking. Stop talking now. Yes, yes, you are reflecting the thoughts of all of the readers. Stop talking now. I'll take some coveralls. Heaven forbid I should ruin any clothing, he says dryly. I try and dismiss the unwelcome image of him without jeans. Yes, yes, me too. Do you need anything else? I squeak as I hand him the blue coveralls. Because you couldn't have any other color but blue. I also like the fact that she apparently has this within arm's reach, just just in case. Yeah. He ignores my inquiry. <laughs> because he's an asshole. Because he's an asshole. How's the oracle coming along? He's finally asked me a normal question, away from all the innuendo and the confusing double talk. A question I can answer. I grasp it tightly with two hands as if it were a life raft and I go for honesty. What? What? This is so contemptible. I, I, there is not a sentence that goes by hardly where I just don't want to backhand this character. I, it's just like the narration is so... It's so cloying and... Ugh. It's trying to sound smart, but it's not smart. Yeah, it's like it's desperately trying to sound clever and cute and trendy and cool and all these things. And it's just like, it's trying so hard and not trying at all at the same time, and it just ends up being extremely obnoxious. I forget which story it was. I, I think it might have been that one I was telling you about with the witches and the, the basements apparently were outlawed. <laughs> yes. and you could be killed for having a basement. I'll reiterate what I said there, here. It is okay to tell us stuff that's going on in normal words, it's okay. You can tell me that somebody's wearing a red shirt and they're hot by basically just telling me they're wearing a red shirt and they're hot. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like what my writing teacher told us in creative writing class. He's like, sometimes blue rain, a red barn, and a white chicken. It's just blue rain, a red barn, and a white chicken. Yeah. That's it. It doesn't mean anything else. It's just there so you can have that image in your mind. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, and I mean, I, it's, not, it's not somehow shameful to be plainly spoken, to be simple in what you say, 
and not try and seem like, and and this is this is also the reason why I don't like a lot of people like Joss Whedon and that and that type. They try too hard, and you see it in the dialogue, you see it in the writing, you see it in the narrative. It's trying so hard to be cool and trendy and hip and fast moving, and you know, bah, 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 you know, it, it yeah. thinks it's much cleverer than it actually is. It's it's yeah. It would be perfectly fine if it didn't have that pretense of I'm so clever, you know, like nobody's going to notice as long as I use big words or as long as I as long as I phrase it in a way that my character just looks so cool and it's just relax, you know, tell the damn story, relax. Was it my turn to read? Sadly, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. My condolences. <laughs> I'm not writing it. Catherine is Miss Cavanna, my roommate. She's the writer. She's a very, she's very happy with it for some reason, even though it wasn't very good at all. Yeah. To be the, to be the writer, she's really horrible. <laughs> She's the editor of the magazine, and she was devastated that she couldn't do the interview in person. I feel like I've come up I've come up for air at last, a normal topic of conversation you just said this. Her only concern is that she doesn't have any original photographs of you. Gray raises an eyebrow. What okay, in writing I mean, this could work, but then you start getting confused as to which character is speaking. There's no reason to have a completely different paragraph for him asking this question. It should be the same line. Yeah, because putting it on another line is not only unnecessary, it's confusing. It's okay if you have established a conversational pattern, you know, like one person another, one person another, or if it's self-evident you know, and what they say, but while it is, you know, evident who's speaking, if you, if you, you know, think about it for a moment, you shouldn't have to think about it for that moment. Besides which, Grey raises an eyebrow is right there. There is no reason to do a, a carriage return. What sort of photos does she want? Okay, I hadn't factored in this response. Why? <laughs> I shake my head because I just don't know. Well, I'm around tomorrow, perhaps. He trails off. You'd be willing to attend a photo shoot? My bro no! He... What? He could just send you some fucking pictures. Just send us some fucking pictures. Surely you're a, you're a CEO of a company. You've got glamour shots. I mean, honestly, contact your secretary, whatever her name was, the, the leaper. <laughs> Batrock. Batrock is the secretary. I mean, uh, God. My voice is squeaky again. Oh. You'd be willing to attend a photo shoot? Ow. Sorry. <laughs> Kate would be in seventh <laughs> heaven if I can pull this off. And you might see him again tomorrow. That dark place at the base of my brain whispers seductively at me. I dismiss the thought. It's not at the base of your brain. You don't know where your consciousness is. She's trying to say her consciousness is somewhere like around her spinal area. Her unconsciousness, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you know, her... Uh... Uh, I'm not even going to entertain this with... Okay. I'm not going to give this the dignity of... <laughs> I dismiss the thought. I love it. I, I mentioned yesterday, I love it when we come back to something that's <laughs> so appropriate. Of all this silly, ridiculous... Kate will be delighted if we can find a photographer. I'm so pleased. I smile at him broadly. His lips part like he is taking a sharp intake of breath, and he blinks. For a fraction of a second, he looks lost somehow. Because you would look lost at that. And the earth shifts slightly on its, a on its axis, the tectonic plates, uh, really, sliding into a new position. <sighs> oh my, Christian Gray's lost look. Let me know about, <laughs> about tomorrow. Reaching into his pocket, he pulls out his wallet. My card. It has my cell number on it. You'll need to call before ten in the morning. What? Because as a CEO and a very high-profile person, you would just have a business card that has your personal cell phone number on it. Well, he has to have something for the ladies. <laughs> okay, I grin up at him. Kate is going to be thrilled. Anna! Paul has materialized at the other end of the aisle. 
at other the end. No, Paul has materialized at other the end of the aisle. Wow, somebody <laughs> really needs to fix that. Yeah, you know how we were saying about, you know, editors really help if you actually have an editor? Yeah, this is this would be one of those cases where an editor would actually have, have come in handy. But there wasn't one. He's Mr. Clayton's youngest brother. I'd heard he was home from Princeton because, of course, he's going to Princeton. This has so many problems with it, I'm not even going to get into it. But I wasn't expecting to see him today. Er, excuse me for a moment, Mr. Gray. Gray frowns as I turn away from him. Paul has always been a buddy, and in this strange moment that I'm having with the rich, powerful, awesomely off the scale... Oh, shut up. Shut the fuck up. Go just shove a cock in your mouth. Just shut up. <laughs> Off the scale, attractive control freak Gray. Yes, because being a control freak is so attractive. And so awesome. Also, how do you know he's a control freak? He hasn't really done anything to prove that yet, other than to kind of scare you, sort of. Yeah, basically it seems like she's having a lot of assumptions about this dude because he's just... Fairly, a fairly shallow, creepy douchebag. But of course, all of her expectations will be fulfilled, I am entirely certain. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, you can just tell all these things about a person when you've known them for like 10 minutes. It's great to talk to someone who's normal, which of course anybody would know normal does not exist. Normativism is more of an average. And, uh, Paul hugs me hard, taking me by surprise. Shouldn't there be a comma there? Not necessarily, but it would probably look better if it, if it did have, because that would be a nice place for a pause. Anna, hi! It's so good to see you, he gushes. Hello, Paul, how are you? You hope- Why would- I just want to say, why would this guy be interrupting her speaking with a customer just to say hi to her? Couldn't he wait? You'd think so, but you never know how- Long they were puttering around, staring at each other and getting wet. But, uh, you're home for your brother's birthday. Because, you know, this, uh, so conspicuous, so conspicuously trying to build up these characters we're not going to see again that are going to play no part in this story. Oh my god, it's there every damn time she says something. It's like it's just so, it's not even natural. It doesn't even feel natural or comfortable. You know, it's like, tell me, Caleb, of the brother that came yesterday and interrupted, because you have a brother who interrupted yesterday. He was interrupting. Tell me more about the incidental thing that we will discuss in his life, even though he will play no part in our future conversations. You know, it's just, it's so conspicuous. It's like... <laughs> I know, I know. <sighs> Also, I know people talk like this, and since it is dialogue, it is okay to write like this. But, really, she hasn't shown a preference to talk like this before now. So, there really should be an R in this sentence. Are you home for your brother's birthday? Yeah, and also, I would just like to note, and, and I found this, I mean, it's not universal, some people do more than others, but... It gets so conspicuous sometimes when, like in this case, she has clearly introduced us to this guy named Paul. Uh -huh. she, has, mm -hmm. she has said his name. She has explained who he is. She's, she has named him by name three times since he was introduced. And then she further says his name when she speaks to him out loud. Why would she even do this? It doesn't really... It, it's not very natural. It doesn't really flow naturally and and like it doesn't really like i could see him saying her name because you know she hasn't he hasn't seen her in a while obviously yeah he knows she knows his name and we know his name as the readers there's really no there's really no value to having her say hello paul how are you you know it would it would make her seem to have more of a more of a relationship with him, like more of a friendship with him, if she was like, hey, how are you, you know, or hey, how was your trip, or, you know, I heard you were back in town, something like that, you know, hello, Paul, how are you? <laughs> it's, like, it's like something someone asks when you're, when you're having an interview. 
<laughs> yeah. Hello, Cassie. How are you? Well, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> it just seems so. It seems so stifled and artificial. It's just. It's so stiff. Now that's what she said. Yep. You're looking well, Anna. Keep really calling her well, Anna. Uh, <laughs> Anna. Well, maybe he doesn't know her. Her new nickname is Anna. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. <laughs> <laughs> He grins as he examines me at arm's length. So he, I thought he hugged you. So then he just pull, like, throws you away from him and, like, you got cooties or something? <laughs> and it's, I don't understand. Then he releases me but keeps a possessive arm draped over my shoulder. Granted, my friends don't put their arms around me like that, but there's nothing exactly possessive about doing that. Unless you're aware that he doesn't like Mr. Gray and has a crush on you or something. And you said that was your boss's brother, so how old is this guy compared to you? Yeah. Not saying it couldn't happen, but... Yeah, and also, I mean, she's not pointed... She, she always takes this time to point out all these irrelevant things, like him going to Princeton, which is bullshit. You know, it would be it would be something different if she had kind of build this up and explain this in some way? Like, why did she feel he was possessive? You could say protectively, because, you know, if he was treating her, and, and it seems like he's sort of treating her like a little sister or something, you know, yeah. like a, affectionately treating her like, you know, the little sister he never had. It, it, it seems like that's the presentation more than possessive. It's more protective than possessive. And... It doesn't even make sense anyway, because he just appeared at the other end of the aisle. He didn't see that they were talking before now. She's talking to a customer, as far as he knows, just like you said. Why would he, first of all, why would he interrupt? And second of all, why would he be possessive or protective? He has not seen any of their interactions. It's just two people. Like, what, does he have a, does he have like a, a t-shirt that says on the back, I'm a sexual predator, and she just hasn't seen the back of him yet? <laughs> I was just about to say, maybe he's been secretly stalking her and him go, uh, as they go through the store. And he's decided to pull a move now because he realizes she's a dumbass. <laughs> he's thinking, I gotta get her away from this guy who's assembling a rape kit right in front of <laughs> yeah, her. Seriously. And she can't see that. <laughs> maybe so. I mean, it would be neat to, to actually have some indication of this. But, you know, this is going to be yet another thing that we talked about that would be better... If it were like this, it would be a better story. <laughs> but it won't be like that. <laughs> no. I shuffle from foot to foot, embarrassed for some reason. It's good to see Paul, as you've said before, but he's always been over-familiar. All of your friends, all of your guy friends, including Jose, have been overly familiar with you. So you say. Yeah, and yet she has not said word one to them, apparently. This has never come up in conversation between them. They are still over-familiar, according to her. Like, how long have you known these people? Have you defined limits? You'd think you would. And especially if they've been your friend for a long enough time to know your comfort zone. You know, like, maybe she is just a huge chuckle fuck. Maybe she has no idea the meaning of setting limits with, with friendships and intimacy and what whatnot. But, like... You would think that this would have come up before now. And speaking of that, I wonder if this might have been the author's intention, but I might be giving her a little too much credit. Always. To show that this is how What's-Her-Face is more of a submissive type who wouldn't complain about her wants and needs. She's just kind of going with the flow, even though it's she's uncomfortable with it. Well, you know... The thing about that is that if that is how it is, then it reflects a gross misunderstanding mm -hmm. on the author's part of what a submissive does and the role that they play in BDSM. The submissive holds all the power. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's it's a big trust thing. It's a big mm -hmm. it's it's a power dynamic, but it's a big trust thing. You are basically saying, Okay, I want you to do this. I'm, uh, this this sort of thing really turns me on. I'm giving you the power for this scene, for what we're doing. But if I say one word, and it's a certain word, if I say that word, you stop. It's doing something the other one likes without hurting them. Well, or even if even if you like 
you know, pain or what whatnot. You know, this this sub, the bottom, you know, yeah. they still have all the power in in this dynamic. Because I mean, if somebody isn't comfortable with something, they they were going to say it. Basically, if you are not a douchebag and you respect your partner, you're going to listen to them. Yeah, but I mean, especially in BDSM relationships, and it really, it really, like, if that really is what she's trying to set up for Ana here, that is so wrong. That is not, that is not at all truthful. Yeah, and in fact, I would say a better author would write a character like that to, by the end of the story, overcome that flaw yeah. And become a stronger person. Yeah, because because submissives in BDSM do have to be quite strong to some level. I mean, even if you enjoy that in terms of your your, you know, sexual power dynamic, you really have to as a sub, as the submissive, you really have to be willing to kind of, you know, you have to kind of let go for the for the scene, but you also have to be willing to say, okay, I'm not comfortable with where this is going and I want it to stop, you know, and you have to, it, you have to trust the other person that they are going to do that. It's just, it really bothers me if she's just the kind of person that's never going to speak up and the kind of person that we're supposed to believe is just a very, a very much a shrinking violet and in an unhealthy way, get her into this stuff that really isn't, healthy BDSM. In fact, it's not really authentic BDSM. It's just abuse. Yeah. It's your turn. Damn, damn. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, uh, when I glance up at Christian Grey, he's watching us like a hawk. Why do you keep saying his full name? We know who he is now. Just use his first name. Yeah. Or his last name, if you want to just be, you know, brief. Also, I realized something earlier. When I was doing the uh, title card, um, I realized, you know, see, I the way I learned it was, you spell the the color gray with an e, you spell the name gray with an a. Some people have the opposite. Some people will just use them interchangeably. I have always spelt gray the color with an e. The thing about this is, though, it would have been much cleverer if the author had had spelled both the color and the name with an e because then the title would almost be clever but it's not she spells gray with an a so there's no double meaning to the title it's just 50 shades of christian gray that really annoys the hell out of me when i realized that i was just like that is so stupid <laughs> anyway um he's watching us like a hawk which should be a signal for you to get the hell away from him who does that? Creepers, that's who. His grey eyes, hooded and speculative, his mouth a hard, impassive line. He's changed from the weirdly attentive customer to someone else. Someone cold and distant. Oh, like the asshole that you gave an interview to, shittily. Yes. This should be a memory fresh in your mind. Paul, I'm with a customer, which is the first thing you should have said. Yeah. Someone you should meet. Why? You no. Know? Why? He's not like your boyfriend yet or anything. You should just be like, Paul, I'm with a customer. I'll, I'll catch up with you later. Really? Yeah, like here in a few minutes when I'm done with him. Or off my shift or something. I say, trying to defuse the antagonism I see in Gray's eyes for no reason at all, I drag Paul over to meet him and they weigh each other up. The atmosphere is suddenly arctic. Because it would be... Uh, Paul, this is Christian Grey. Mr. Grey, this is Paul Clayton. His brother owns the place, and for some irrational reason, I feel I have to explain a bit more. It's not really irrational if you are introducing two people to give it a context. I've known Paul ever since I've worked here. I, ha I started working here. Though we don't see each other that often. He's back from Princeton, where he's studying business administration. I am babbling. Now, stop now. Not really. You you just said, like, hey, he goes to school, he's back for a few days, and then he'll probably be going back to school soon. Uh, Mr. Clayton, Christian holds his hand out, his look unreadable. Mr. Gray, Paul returns his handshake. Way up, not the Christian. Way up? Really? Really? I'm just sadly shaking my head. Not the Christian Gray of Gray Enterprises Holding? Hold what a... What? <laughs> What a smooth, silky name for your 
<laughs> your company. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Enterprises Holdings. Too many S's. Like, seriously, could you not have come up with something more clever and, and which rolls off the tongue? Gray Enterprises Holdings? That sounds so awkward. I guess it's in keeping with the rest of the story. Yeah. Paul goes from uh, Surly to Awestruck in less than a nanosecond. Gray gives him a polite smile that doesn't reach his eyes, because he's an asshole. Yes. Wow, is there anything I can get you? Who's asking this? Who knows? <laughs> maybe maybe Selbe. <laughs> uh, Selbe would be like, yeah, but no. Anastasia has it covered, Mr. Clayton. She's been very attentive. His expression is impassive, but his words... Ellipses. It's like... It's like he's saying something else entirely. It's baffling. It's not that confusing, honey. Maybe you should sit down. Maybe she's slow. Uh, yeah, there's no maybe here. Cool, Paul responds. Catch you later, why? Ina. This is really odd. Like, why would he... Why would he just leave right there? Also, why does he seem to have a more youthful conversational tone when the impression, at least the impression that I got from what she said so far, is that the that the Claytons that own the the shop are actually much older. So, like, how much of a younger brother is this? Well, maybe he's like me and Kelvin. Maybe. And, you know, ten years apart. Yeah. But still, well, whatever. <laughs> sure, Paul. I watch him disappear toward the stockroom. Anything else, Mr. Gray? Get it, Adam. His tone is clipped and cool. Damn, have I offended him. Taking a deep breath, I turn and head for the till. What is his problem? Cash register. You know, yeah, I have never... Heard... She, she is British, it seems. <laughs> Even though she's writing a story that takes place in America. I'm like, okay... I can understand maybe you don't know certain words or couldn't have friends or something like that who would know about these kinds of things, but you use the internet. There's the internet, and there's also Hello Editor, which obviously you didn't have either. Hello Editor. Sorry. Uh. Animaniacs. <laughs> I ring up the rope coveralls, masking tape, and cable ties all at the till. Yes, we know. Yes. You said this. Yes, in the same word. <laughs> you you misused the same word just like one sentence ago. And anybody that sees these things together and doesn't at least think, hey, this is kind of weird. You know, it would be like it would be like going to the grocery and and picking up like Half a dozen cucumbers, a tub of Vaseline, and a pack of extra large condoms. You know, like <laughs> going through the line, people would be, people would be like, you know, that seems kind of odd. This is the same kind of thing. You'd look at that and you'd be like, that's just kind of odd to me. You know, maybe it doesn't mean anything. Maybe it's just these, the, they happen to need these things. But this guy has been a total creep every time she has encountered him. Anyone with half a brain would have already put two and two together. Yep. Is it me? Damn, it's me. <laughs> that will be $43, please. I glance up at Gray, and I wish I hadn't. He's watching me closely, his gray eyes intense and smoky and creepy. It's unnerving. Would you like a bag, I ask, as I take his credit card? <laughs> please, Anastasia, which is not at all awkward. Or weird. <laughs> His tongue caresses my name, go fuck yourself. <laughs> and my heart... She'll probably be doing that later. My heart is... She's going to be fucking herself later? Good. She'll have the, <laughs> she'll have the cucumbers and the Vaseline. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and my heart, once again, is frantic. I can hardly breathe. I'm having a panic attack, so I take the bag and I start breathing into it. He looks satisfied. <laughs> Hurriedly, I place his purchases in a plastic carrier. I think we mean a plastic bag. <laughs> but I think uh, we're getting to I think we're getting to even more oddly used words that are I, I think that one's regional. <laughs> I haven't had plastic carrier in ages that didn't mean like an actual like hard plastic carrier for something. Honestly, for me being American, that would make me think of um 
You know, just like one of those small little baskets, those plastic baskets you get instead of a buggy and carry it around filling it with whatever you're getting. Is what I, I would first think of myself. Yeah, I mean, I may be misremembering. I'm not all here today either, and I don't, I don't actually hear plastic carrier used in any way by anyone ever. So, so I could be, I could be thinking of the wrong thing. It's you, darling. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dave's distracting me. <laughs> Dave's like, I was still asleep when you was asking about reading. <laughs> He's like, but I got stuff to do today, so I can't read today. Lucky bastard. <laughs> you hear that, Dave? I love you, Dave. Go- <laughs> You'll call me if you want me to do the photo shoot. He's all business once more. I nod, rendered speechless yet again for some reason, and hand back his credit card. Good until mo- uh, <laughs> I'm trying to rush myself through it, and I am skipping syllables. Good until tomorrow, perhaps. He turns to leave, then pauses. Oh, and Anastasia, I'm glad Miss Kavanaugh couldn't do the interview. He smiles, then strides with a renewed purpose out of the store, slinging the plastic bag over his shoulder, which I could have called it a fucking plastic bag instead of a plastic carrier, but I didn't. I somehow, for some reason, made that choice to do that, just like I made the conscious choice to call it a till and not a register. Leaving me a quivering mass of raging female hormones, blah, blah, blah. I spend several minutes staring at the closed door through which he's just left before I return to planet Earth from planet Dumbass, apparently. (laughs) Okay. I like him. You're an idiot. Yes. There. I've admitted it to myself. I cannot hide from my feelings anymore. I've never felt like this before. Felt like what? A retard? (laughs) I've never felt attracted to anyone before. What? (laughs) (laughs) I find him attractive. Very attractive. We get it. You've said this. Yes, and you always say attractive. You don't describe how he's attractive. You don't tell us in any way what part of him is appealing. You just say he's attractive and young. But it's a lost cause, I know. And I thought, are you that clueless? Are you seriously clueless? I can't pay attention to shit. He bought a rape kit. He bought a rape kit for you. In fact, how did he even know you worked there and why was he there? Are you, can you not put two and two together? And I sigh with bittersweet regret. Fuck you. It was just a coincidence. His coming here, I'm sure it was. Because he just so happened to pick the store that you're in. In the same city that you're in. <laughs> Hundreds of miles, I might add, from his office. But still, I can admire him from afar, surely. No harm can come from that. (laughs) And if I find a photographer, because there wouldn't be photographers at the student paper, or people taking photography class, I can do some serious admiring now. Yeah, because, like, Kate would know a photographer. She would probably know several photographers. She runs a goddamn magazine. Why would she not know photographers? I bite my lip in anticipation and find myself grinning like a schoolgirl. I need to phone Kate and organize a photo shoot. This is so stupid. This is not how things work. It's how nothing works. I just... I just... I just... Like, what is this... What is this author even thinking? Are they thinking? I don't think they are. It's it's just really ridiculous. And, like, I don't... You know, I know a lot of people don't see the the distinction they don't understand they cannot tell the difference between like being attracted to someone like in a superficial way you know maybe just wanting to have sex with them maybe she just wants to nail this dude maybe she just wants to have hot dirty sex with this dude it is problematic that she is thinking that she is she's having you know like feelings oh i like him you know i've never been so attracted to someone before that is kind of problematic. It it kind of makes me feel like she's not approaching this in a way that is intelligent or responsible, but then this is Fifty Shades of Grey, so of course it's not intelligent or responsible. She's not really she's not really stopping to think about her feelings and if she is just thinking, Yeah, that that guy's look and the way he is appeals to me without even thinking, Hey, I wonder if he's actually good for an actual relationship even if it is just sexual you know these are things that you should think about before 
you know, losing yourself on planet Damas, like, like Aina here. It really is d- distressing to read this. And like, I think even if I hadn't heard what a bad and badly written book this is, and how poorly it treats relationships and BDSM, I would still probably be pretty concerned reading just through chapter two at her attitude going into this. It's it's really, it's troubling. Yeah, it is. If anybody wants to donate the next 50 bucks, we will read chapter three. <laughs> yeah, personally, I'd rather go and read Twilight, so donate 27 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and then donate 54 and be like, this is for Twilight, not Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> I, ha- I hate them both, but I hate Twilight slightly less. So. Three days later, there's $50 in my account. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> you know, it really is kind of sad because like, I've started to feel the way that I did when we were reading my life. Oh, I've been feeling it since the first chapter. I, yeah, I... I have that feeling in me. I I despise Aina about as much as I did Jenna. I have this horrible. Uh, it's a, it's pretty much as bad as M I L. It is. I have the same feeling about the story and the way that it develops and the way that the characters interact and the horrible misappropriations of kinks and fetishes and the absolute lack of any comprehension of any kind of connection to how these things really are, or even or even like a healthy fantasy. It's not even a healthy fantasy. Like, this story literally is building suspense for me, and it's not like erotic suspense. It's holy shit, Texas Chainsaw Massacre suspense. Like, I'm literally waiting for the crazy guy to show up later and show that he marked their van and they're going to go in the, they're going to go in the little shack and then someone's going to get clubbed on the head with a hammer and dragged away to the slaughter. Uh, this is I, I I felt the same way the first time I watched the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and this is especially noteworthy to listeners that know me because I fucking hate Texas, and that movie is like everything about Texas that I think coming away from the experience of having lived there. So, so, so like really, <laughs> I really don't like this story. So we will read more of this if you donate fifty bucks. Unfortunately, yeah, sadly. But a uh, promise is a promise. <sighs> and we can't afford to lie. No, because I need 50 bucks every month. <laughs> Preferably. Or more if you're willing to. <laughs> you know, it would almost be amusing if if the author were intelligent enough to make it like a, a tongue-in-cheek sort of, sort of story, like a satire or something, you know, like, yeah. here are these... Here are these stereotypically awful people being complete fuck ups in terms of this this king or whatever, and look at how stupid they are. You know, it would be actually really amusing to see a biting dark satire. Here's a group of complete dumbasses trying to do a thing where you don't need to be a complete dumbass to do it right and well. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's it's distressingly similar to my inner life. With the feeling is is troublingly similar. Maybe she wrote in my L. She's Jenna. <laughs> that really disturbs me to think and I'm actually sitting here seriously thinking maybe she did. <laughs> <laughs> she fucking did. I just the but the, and then again, this is just like my inner life. It's like an endless list of things that if they had only done this, it would have been better, or it would have worked or you know, we're going to have so many better ideas that we could have done better than this shit. And But it's shit. It's shit. And that's why it fails. Has it really beaten us down so much this this early? Are we really <laughs> seeing the yeah. signs so clearly? Yeah. I think so too, yeah. I think you're right. We see, it's very clear. I mean, we have to be blind not to see the similarities to my inner life. It feels like my inner life. The redundancies, the stupidity, the illogicalness of it all, the bondage themes, the unhealthy relationship. Stupid characters. Yeah. The whole everybody's in love with the main character, even though they shouldn't be. The only thing we don't have so far is a birthing fetish. Yeah, but, you know, give it time. Maybe we'll find something equally unsavory. This is the story that really <laughs> sucks. It's like reading M.I.L. all over again. Why did 
<laughs> we start reading it. We totally knew what it was. And we'll keep on reading it until there's no more chapters to read and we've made a shit ton of money. <laughs> this is the book that really sucks. <laughs> I am fully out of fucks. <laughs> That should just be the, the, the warnings <laughs> for, for each video. It's just us singing. Like, we could probably rewrite that whole s song and just constantly sing it throughout the entire story. Yeah. Oh, God. I'm Caleb. And I'm Ishjo. And this has been Red Knot. Thank you for listening. And if you want to hear Chapter 3 of Fifty Shades of Grey, send me <sighs> 50 bucks. On Patreon, through PayPal, or right on the, uh, the front of my channel page. I stuttered through that, but that's okay. Maybe we should have something that some people can send for us not to read it. What's the fun in that? Well, the fun is not reading it. <laughs> <laughs> fun is doing something else, bills. but Caleb needs to pay her bills. Seriously. And the more money she gets, she can also add to the computer fund. So that we can get an even better computer than what we have right now. Woo! But thank you for listening. And I'm sorry for the pain that it was. But remember, 50 bucks and we'll read chapter 3. Sadly. Bye! Bye.